We're going to break down the three things about melody writing that I think we can learn from Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On from, of course, the movie Titanic. And be sure to stick around for the end of the video where we're going to have a bonus tip on Celine Dion's melody performance and how we can apply that to our songs as well. So the first melody writing tip is to leverage the power of large leaps in our melodies. When you think of the moment of the song that actually gives you goosebumps, and don't pretend like you don't get goosebumps at this part of the song, what is that part of the song? Song. Well, almost certainly, even if there's only one spot in the song that gives you goosebumps, it is certainly the high note directly after the key change. Just in general, if you think of all the points and songs that give you the most chills, most of the time it tends to be where there's going to be a high note in the melody. And you may say, Joseph, I don't have a massive range like Celine does. And that probably is true, very few people do, but we don't need that big of a range to leverage this tip. Because the high note of a song is going to be relative to the rest of the song. Does it help if the high note is a genuinely high note that few people can hit? Yes, of course it's going to help but we still can leverage the same principle that a note that is relative to the rest of the song much higher is a great way to have that note stand out. And this is why it's important to understand your own vocal range in your songwriting, because if you don't really understand your own vocal range, how can you possibly leverage what you do have as a range in your music? And back to my heart will go on. A part of the reason that that high note works so well is not just that it's a high note, but it's a high note that is leapt to rather than step to. It is a jump of an octave, which is absolutely massive. It's the same jump that you have in the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which incidentally, the most goosebump inducing part of Somewhere Over the Rainbow's melody is the same part. It's the somewhere, which is that octave. So figure out your range and leverage large leaps. This means that you are moving by more than just a step up and a step down, but instead you might be going up by a third, a fourth, a fifth, or maybe even an entire octave. And if that leap is also a leap that goes up and is hitting a note that is pretty high relative to the other notes in the song, that is going to be a great way to make it a super memorable part of your melody. The next melody writing tip from My Heart Will Go On is to leverage the leading tone. So when we actually take a look at the verse melody, it looks like it would be pretty boring. The rhythm isn't all that interesting and the melody hardly moves at all for most of it. Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you, that is how I know you, go on. But it's not just Celine's voice saving the melody. The melody is inherently a pretty interesting melody. In fact, if you even listen to covers of that song, you will often find that, hey, that verse melody is still interesting, even though it doesn't have the benefit of Celine's voice. And this is basically because the verse just masterfully uses the leading tone. It obsesses over the leading tone. The leading tone is commonly used to refer to just the seventh scale degree in any key. So in C major, B, or in G major, F sharp, or in D major, C sharp, but really a leading tone is just any note that resolves or leads to another note that is a half step or semitone away. A half step or semitone is really just one note to the next note. So if you look at a piano, that would be one note to whatever the very next note up or down is, or on a guitar, it would be going up by one fret or down by one fret on the same string. So the leading tone is a great thing to add to any of your melodies that will help make it more interesting because it so badly wants to resolve to the tonic. So it's a great way to add tension to your song because when you go to that seventh scale degree, it wants to resolve to the tonic generally. So you can either give the listener exactly what they want and what they expect, and then there was tension leading up to the release, or you can increase the tension by not actually giving them that resolution. And the third tip is to let your melody go somewhere. Just in the chorus of My Heart Will Go On, there is a range of an entire higher octave. There are 
so many songs, entire songs that don't even use close to an octave. Some songs will stay all within a fifth. And it may be true that you have a limited range, but I can almost guarantee that you have a range of at least an octave. And probably most of us have more like an octave and a half to two octaves. Now, I'm not saying that you should use every single bit of your range, but don't be afraid to step somewhere outside your comfort zone and to not just constantly have your entire song all within a small range. A great way to do this is simply to make sure that your chorus is higher than your verse or your high notes in your chorus are at least significantly higher than your verse. Allow your melody to go somewhere. Don't just have the whole song right in the middle of your comfort range because that's usually not going to create melodies that are particularly interesting and it certainly is not going to create melodies that cause people to get chills or goosebumps. And I promised a bonus tip about what we can learn from how Celine performs the melody of My Heart Will Go On. So here that is. We can use dynamics over time to grow a melody without actually changing the melody itself. There are so many reasons that final chorus gives anybody who has half of a heart chills. First, there's the construction of the melody itself. We already talked about the massive leap at the beginning of the chorus. And then, of course, the rest of the chorus melody is great as well. And it actually goes somewhere. It utilizes an entire octave. And then there's the key change. A key change is a great hack to make your last chorus always more interesting. And then, of course, there's Celine's voice. We can't ignore the fact that Celine is such a marvelous singer, one of the all-time great singers, in my opinion, that honestly, she could probably make anything sound that much better. But ultimately, the reason this song is so special, I think, is the combination of her voice and the song itself. But a huge part of why that last chorus is absolutely chill-inducing is because she restrained her dynamics in her performance before she gets to that final chorus. So if you listen to how the song develops, she is not going all out the entire time. The first time she sings the chorus, it is super restrained. And even the second time she sings the chorus, it's still pretty restrained. the key change and then finally she absolutely belts that high note instead of utilizing some head voice which is a part of why it gives so many goosebumps for that final chorus because not only is it an inherently great melody and not only does it have Celine Dion singing it and not only does it have a key change but also she restrained her dynamics and sang utilizing some head voice and then finally goes all out belting the melody just for that final chorus, which really helps it to stand out. So in your song, consider actually not going all out with singing the melody every single time, but actually having a more restrained performance earlier so that later in the song, you can absolutely belt the melody and it will feel that much more chill inducing. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was something else you'll likely find helpful is my free guide on 10 different ways to start writing a song. If you want to get started writing a song right now or you felt a little uninspired lately and you just need something to help kickstart that inspiration, be sure to grab this guide. Link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll talk to you in the next one.